we're doing this series on, on victory, which is going to keep running till, till Easter. And uh, today I want to talk to you about, about Jesus. And we sang about him, we enjoyed him, we, oh, he's so all over us today, it's so beautiful. So, uh, if you, we're probably going to see how we go for time, but two, maybe three passages, so. We, we're in Hebrews, just, just waving to a friend, that's. Hebrews chapter 12 is where I'm going to kick off. My title is, so this is victory number two, and the title for this section is the joy set before him. So Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of of God. So who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame? That The joy set before him really captured me uh, some time ago. The, the cross was, was gruesome. The cross was brutal. The cross was... It, 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 even the Romans stopped doing it after a while because they realized it, it was possibly the most brutal, crude, and awful way of killing people you could imagine. To, to put nails through someone's ankles and wrists and then drop them in the ground on a piece of wood and leave them there till they either suffocate themselves or, or bleed to death. It, it, it's, a, it's an agonizing, shameful, brutal way to die. Just, just the physical dynamic, the physical experience. And, and Jesus didn't endure, endure that. He also walked through the whole humiliation and, and the, the injustice. <clears throat> and, 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 and they whipped him till he bled and Probably one of the reasons that they found someone to carry his cross for him was that he didn't have strength enough to carry it because some people died through the scourging at the level that he received it. So there would have been strips of flesh taken out of his back, the literally stripes across his back, blood oozing out all across his back, and then they put a heavy wooden cross on him and say you've got to carry it I can see why they recruited some help to get him up there so the joy set before him he endured something gruesome and and everything I've just said to you is, is he endured something at a physical level that any one of us would recoil from and find abhorrent and distasteful and brutalizing it even to see we may need therapy in our day and age you see that happen you go probably have therapy um, but Jesus went Jesus knew what was coming he knew what was happening he knew what was before him and yet he, in, he went through it for joy he had a vision of something that, 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 that pulled him through that, that propelled him forward, that, that caused him to, to embrace that. I don't think he was laughing on the cross. He was, he was in agony. He was crying out. He, but he had, the goal was joy. He had a target of joy. He had a target of joy that was so, so consuming because Jesus is not a robot. He's not like, now I will do the will of the Father. I will suffer. I will die. And then everything will be sorted out. He's human. He's flesh. He feels. He went through these, these agonies. Such was the motivation of the joy that he could see that he, he submitted to this injustice he submitted to this this horror show he submitted to the shame because he could see something so powerful that it pulled him through it all and I want to I want to talk to you about that everything that happened at the cross had deep and profound meaning for everybody on the planet and especially us 
He didn't do it for him, he did it for us. He didn't do it for show, he didn't do it for fame, he did it for us. He saw something that gave him great joy. He saw something that excited his heart. He saw something that, 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 that he could see him leaping and dancing and praising. And, 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 and the more you realize the delight that God has in people and their, their, their wholeness and their redemption and their connection to him, the more you see that, the more you realize that Jesus is excited about what is going to happen because of what he's going to suffer. And the level of agony tells you something about the level of the motivation. This isn't excitement about getting McDonald's after the meeting. (laughs) See, that maybe touched five people in the room. Or whatever, you know, whatever your team winning, your your favorite dish, this this is this is this is a mighty visceral gut level pull for joy and uh, 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 I probably will not finish all the things that he was excited about going to the cross but just in the worship and we're in the prayer time I'm gonna I'm gonna start in a different place to where I was beginning to start uh, plan to start which is I'm gonna start in Isaiah 53 let me put it this way. I, I, had a, I had a vision of this some time ago, and it was as if what I saw, well, what I saw in the vision was that as Jesus was, Jesus was in the experience, he wasn't detached, he wasn't stoic, he wasn't, he wasn't aloof, like observing himself. He was in the experience. He was literally there as they pulled the whip across his back. He was literally there as the blood dripped out of him and and what I saw in this vision was that in every like it was every drop of blood he could see joy he could see an outcome he could see it was worth it he could see something taking place and I just want to read you Isaiah 53 this is this is out of the uh, New American Standard and I'm pulling in the marginal reference because uh, it, it, it just enriches this passage that some of us are really familiar with, Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, says, Surely our griefs and sicknesses he himself bore. just want to let that land. Surely our griefs and sicknesses he himself bore, and our sorrows and pain he carried. There's a vicariousness about this. There's more happening than just his suffering at a natural level. He's carrying something for us. And he's carrying something instead of us in an exchange. I'm going to read it again. Surely our griefs and sicknesses he himself bore. And our sorrows and pain he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. It maybe looked to us like God was doing it. But what he was suffering was mostly our stuff. And what's our stuff? It's our griefs. It's our sicknesses. It's our sorrows and our pains. He was pierced through for our transgressions. And he was crushed for our iniquities. And it says that the chastening for our shalom, our well-being, fell on him. Our well-being, our wholeness, our, our, our health, our sense of prosperity. It's, it's the Hebrew word that encapsulates all those things. Jesus, Jesus was pierced and chastened so that we could enjoy wholeness, shalom, peace. And by his stripes or his scourging, his whippings, we are healed. What's going on? What's, Jesus is there and he's, he's stretched out and, 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 and they're whipping him and the blood's coming out. And what's going on? He's seeing. 
this is agony, but I see the joy of millions walking out of sickness into health. I see that cancer thing. I praise God for the research. Praise God for the doctors. Praise God for chemo. Praise God for the skills that you give the men of earth. But praise God for the drop of blood that had cancer written on it. And the joy in Jesus' heart, anticipating a release of that to the earth against the scourge. He was scourged so that he could rid us of a scourge. Huh, that got him excited. That got him through. That got, he was motivated by the joy. And if you've ever been involved in praying for the sick and seeing someone healed, some people have all sorts of assumptions about what's going on in people who do praying for the sick um, there's absolute joy seeing someone free of pain discomfort something that's life shapingly life inhibiting life constraining something that brings much often inconvenience much sorrow much difficulty not just to that person but probably to their close friends, their family, there's some absolute incredible joy to be partnering with the Father in seeing someone be able to step out of that and into a level of wholeness that then ripples out into everybody that's around them. That's joy. Jesus was feeling that. Jesus was anticipating that. Jesus was motivated by the joy set before him. Of that kind of impact, that kind of ripple effect, that kind of release, that kind of hope, that kind of freedom that was going to come into the bodies of men and women and children around the planet because he was willing to go through that. He took pain, he took sickness. He, he, he did an exchange in such a way as he, he took our brokenness, our painfulness, if that's even a word, but you know what I mean. Uh, he took our, our anxiety and our lack of peace and our lack of inner, inner completeness. He took it in himself and he said, as, as a swap deal, I give you shalom. I give you heaven's wholeness for free. I, 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 I'm so excited about what's coming out of this transaction because I am releasing heaven's reality to the earth for free. And I am paying and I am enduring and I am soaking up, as it were, the, the, the violations and the, the, the disaster and the difficulty that exists in fallen humanity in order that they could for free step into my wholeness. In, in a sense, what he did in his life, he's consummating and expressing in fullness in his death. That it could expand beyond, you know, a country in the, the east end of the Mediterranean to a planet-wide release of heaven's goodness. The chastening for our well being fell on him. He, he didn't just break the curse, he absorbed the consequences of curse. He 
He's so excited about seeing that. Fills his heart with joy. <laughs> what else is going on? I'm going to read you another passage, Romans 3. Some of you are looking a little bit somber and a little sad. The goal of talking about the cross is not to induce sentimental sorrow in us, but to inspire us about the outcome. We, we, don't, we don't have to do it because he did it. We don't have to agonize about this. He did the agonizing. Now I know that our experience of many of these things is incomplete. But that doesn't mean his provision is incomplete. It just means our experience is incomplete and that can grow. The joy, what else did he, he was was super excited about this one. Forgiving all our sins. Wow. Wow. So I don't think he was excited about the process of providing the forgiveness. He was excited about what forgiving all our sins would do to us. Wow. He was full of joy about that one too. So he's full of joy about cancers disappearing and people with broken lives being made whole. And he's super, super joyful about people going around going, I'm forgiven. All that crap I did in my life. I had a mountain of garbage in my life and I'm forgiven. I looked round, I came to Jesus and then I looked round and that mountain was gone. Not only was the mountain gone, all the guilt I felt about the mountain was gone and all the shame about the mountain was gone. Where did it go, cross? He endured shame so we wouldn't have to live in it anymore. Now the righteousness of God has been manifest apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Just kind of get your emotions around that. Believing means you partake of the righteousness of God. It's more exciting than you're currently feeling it is. It's amazing. (laughs) For there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, God made humanity for glory. He made us in his image. Is God glorious or not? We, We sang about his holiness. We sang... Come on, is, is God glorious? Yes. He made, us in his, he made us in his image, therefore, we were made to be glorious. Is humanity currently glorious? No. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is a very encompassing thing. It's sort of wrong acts, wrong thoughts, poor behaviors, broken lives. Falling short from the glory of God. But God's contention, God's passion is for his glory. His desire is for his glory. And his glory is magnified by it being seen in and through you. So he's about restoring your glory. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The original intention was that we're all glorious. Just look at the people around you. They already are pretty glorious. And justified by his grace is a gift. Oh. So we often quote Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but it's half a sentence. It's half a sentence. Are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus, who God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. He paid for it all. He paid for it all. All that mountain of crap in your life. He said, 
I'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it. I'll pay for the, 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 the effect that that has had on your relationship with the Heavenly Father. I am going to deal with that for you. For free. For free. But, 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 but what, what, what sins are covered? Are you sure about this? How about tomorrow's? Yesterday's? Today's? Forever's? All of them. Like prepaid. I mean, this is dangerous stuff. He, he forgave them all. All. It's a very short word with a very long meaning. I just want to break the forgiveness thing down into a couple of points. <laughs> he, another way the Bible phrases this, he became sin that we might become the righteousness of God as a free gift. No small print. The transaction is simply we believe. For our sake, he made him to be sin. So this is some mystery in the, the, the economics and mechanics of the Godhead is that there's this thing that happens where Jesus on the cross becomes sin. Although he had never knew sin and never did sin. So not only is he, only is he enduring the physical agonies of this, he is bearing our pain, bearing our sorrow, and bearing our sin. This is, this is a multi-level lot of difficulty that he is enduring for this joy set before him. But the joy of, that's before him is that we would become righteous. Now, sometimes when I've listened to, to this and thought about this, I thought a bit like right. The righteousness that God gives me is a bit like my appendix, which I now don't have, so that's a bit confusing. But by the sense of the righteousness of God is given to you as a free gift, you, know, you are a new creature in Christ, and it kind of arrives somewhere here. And there's you, there's all of you, all your cells and all your feelings and all that you are, and there he, there he is. You prayed a prayer, and one day, pop, there's a little... Jesus righteousness ticking away maybe not doing anything a bit like your appendix <laughs> but by faith I've received the righteousness of God and now as a Christian somehow I've got to let it out I've first of all got to find it but the miracle of salvation has happened God has birthed heaven in my heart It's in here somewhere, isn't it not? It says it in the Bible. No where Jess gets it from now. <laughs> no. And thrice no. He became sin thoroughly, completely, utterly that we might be the righteousness of God. Not just a little spot. Just, if, if you would bear with me, just hold a finger in front of you for a moment. Just meditate on your finger. Look at it carefully. When Jesus died on the cross and became sin, he created, it, that is the most righteous finger you have ever seen before you. Hold up a whole hand. Every part of it is righteous. Paul says, don't surrender then your members to do unrighteous things. But the transaction was thorough and complete and includes all of you. He was very excited about that. He had a lot of joy about making you righteous. 
So not just forgiving you, but changing your actual nature in such a way that body, soul, spirit, the completeness of you is completely righteous. I'm going to say that again. The completeness of you is completely righteous as a free gift. Not just your components. You're not waiting for your appendix to break out and affect the whole of you. He has already affected all of you. You're, you're an, my identity is as a righteous one. I get to choose what I do with my members, but fundamentally that transaction happened at the cross, and when I put my faith in it, it's real for me. I'm not just forgiven all I have done, all I am doing, and all I ever will do. He's made my actual nature from my fingertips to the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, my feelings and everything about me, he has declared and not just positionally made me righteous, he's made me righteous a cellular level to use modern language do you see he was very excited about that enough to endure the cross and despise its shame that joy of seeing you righteous was like yeah I'm going to do all that horrible stuff because this is brilliant for them I'm going to land it on, on, on this one I think that Forgiveness is great. Forgiveness is necessary. Release from guilt is powerful. But every, every sin and every activity that we do that is against our glorious, in, the glorious intention, which is against our glorious nature, which is against God's glorious plan, every time we violate that, it, it, we need forgiveness from it, but it leaves a stain. It leaves a mark in you. And, and Hebrews is probably the strongest on this in the books of the Bible. But it talks about dealing with a bad conscience. So stain happens in your conscience. So you say, yeah, I'm forgiven. I did all those things in my past. And, you know, there's all this stuff about my life. And it's just, 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 just really awful. And oh, I'm so glad I'm forgiven. But then there's still these, all these stains written somewhere in your in, inner self that every now and again you can suddenly, it pops into your head and you feel embarrassed. You feel sad that you were ever like that. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking to human beings in this room. It's like, oh yeah, I really did. I know I'm forgiven, but yeah, I really did totally screw that up with that person or in that way. Or, and it lives, it lives, it lives inside you. And there are moments that can be triggered and suddenly you're like, oh, I feel... A, what you're feeling is shame. What, what you need is that bit inside of you, that conscience thing, that, that shame. You need, you need a miracle in your shame. You need the blood of Jesus that cleanses you from all your sin to penetrate your conscience so that your conscience is free from dead works. He cleanses our conscience. His blood washes the human conscience clean. Hebrews 9, verse 9 and 14. And what that allows us to do is walk free of shame and confident in his presence. Because our, we are not accusing ourselves internally. We are not pulling ourselves down and saying we are not worthy of our intimacy with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because of the stain of history that still lives in our conscience. The blood of Jesus, the death of Jesus goes so deep into our psyche that we can be freed from guilt and shame and Jesus is full of joy because he did enough to get you free at every level. From sin, its power, its penalty, and the pain of it in your life. Can we stand? So Jesus went through all of that for joy, for pleasure, for excitement, for intoxicating delight in seeing that you could enjoy forgiveness today. Doom. 
Your conscience could be completely free from all those niggly thoughts, all those embarrassing remembrances could be washed clean. And you can, as, <laughs> as Luther would say, you can literally fart in the face of the devil. I love Luther. Because he uses those things inside of us to accuse us. And you could say, get behind me, Satan. He has no space in me. He has no place in me. My conscience, my history is wiped clean because of the blood of Jesus. And it was his joy to make it so. And he reveled in the delight of seeing your righteous identity and health breaking out everywhere. He was very excited about that and endured all those different components of his suffering to release something powerful and incredible to all of humanity. How are you doing? What do you need today? Anxiety traded in for some shalom. Sickness traded in for some health. Feeling guilty, trade it in for forgiveness. Having a poor conscience about things you did yesterday or long ago. Allow Jesus the joy of cleaning your conscience up so you can walk free and look at the face of the Father without any shame at all. I don't know what you need, but if you need something, would you just lift your hands to the Father? And I just want to pray over you and just let Him do His thing in your life today. Let him do the powerful thing that he's already done. Let it become reality in you this morning in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that you, you captured us up in this incredible, this incredible thing called the cross. That you had excitement in your heart because you saw us. You saw us well. You saw us whole. You saw us free. You saw us forgiven. You saw us righteous. Huh. Huh. You saw us in your presence. You saw us connected to you. You saw us free from guilt and shame. And, and we want to step deeper into that today. Whatever we need, God. It's already been paid for at the cross. I just want to release it afresh into our hearts and minds today. Release it afresh into our bodies today. Release all the yummy goodness that you so powerfully paid for into our lives today. We step in again to your provision. We step in again to your reality. We step in again to your righteousness, peace, and joy. You are so good, Jesus. Thank you. Can we just thank him? Just thank him for doing all of that for the joy of what he did for us. Thank you, Jesus. Put, put, that, put that phrase on your lips just for a few moments. Just make the effort to thank him for all the incredible things that he's done for us. Thank you, Jesus.